All right, then I think we start with our webinar today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on outside council management and electronic procurement on legal services. My name is Aaron Schauder. I'm working with legal departments and law firms on the development and execution of legal operations initiatives. The background of this webinar is an interview with Maurus Schreifogel, Chief Legal Innovation Officer of Novartis, in the latest edition of UV. So if you haven't had an opportunity to read this one, it's worth reading. Uh, latest edition of UVA. And following the interview, we've received quite a lot of questions on both topics, OCM, so outside council management and e-procurement. And therefore we thought it might be best to provide you with an opportunity to listen to and ask questions to both Mauros and Mark Wilson, who is with us, Senior Vice President EMEA with Pursuit. Uh, to give you sufficient time to ask your questions, we want to keep presentations rather short. And we would like to start with Mark introducing himself and pursue it, followed by Maurus, who will share with us some and hopefully further details on the Novartis OCM program. After that, Mark will give a quick introduction to the Pursuit tool. And after that, we'll have enough time to answer your questions. So if you do have questions, please use the chat function and we will take care of that after we have the presentation from Mark. So Mr. Bolson, the stage is yours. Thank you, Akim. So I'm just going to cover uh, three quick slides. And the purpose of this really is to provide some context around the technologies that Novartis is using for their outside council management program. So if you give me a couple of seconds while I share my screen. Um, so to be clear, what Pursuit provides to uh, clients like Novartis is the opportunity to invite law firms to uh, propose their services on a matter by matter basis. So this is very complementary to uh, technologies like e-billing that come later on in the matter lifecycle. In terms of, of what it actually does, you can see here, this is a view of how it provides a framework and a rigorous process around evaluating the law firms, both in terms of some of the uh, qualitative aspects, their expertise and experience and so on, um, through to more quantitative aspects around pricing. And also, as you'll hear from Maris, um, enabling organizations to promote their corporate objectives in areas such as diversity and inclusion and also um, environmental aspects. Um, just finally, these are some of examples of the uh, clients that we work with. We have clients throughout the globe. Um, in terms of um, the, uh, and it is a cloud-based platform where um, the actual law firms and legal service providers propose their services directly. In terms of, of that, we have um, organizations and law firms all over the world. For example, at the top end, 98% of the largest 200 law firms in the world have responded to requests through our platform. I'm going to uh, leave there, and I think I'm now handing over to um, Maris uh, to introduce uh, his program and the way that he um, uh, uses Pursuit and his outside council management program. Thank you very much, Mark, and, and hello, everybody. Um, I will quickly speak about the history of our outside Council program, um, and I encourage you to use the chat function or um, raising your virtual hand in order to stop me if there are any um, questions or comments that, that come up um, so that we can shape um, this, this webinar um, to your needs. Um, we started outside council management um, in 2008 um, with the introduction of e-bidding. We started out being very spend-centric or spend-focused. First of all, we needed transparency um, because before 2008, we had no clue what we were spending on outside council. By the way, we didn't know what we were spending on in-house council um, either, and we didn't know how many people were for the legal function. Um, so all of those were important topics that we had to cover. Um, we further developed 
um, the organization of outside council on the basis of this information a couple of years later, but we were still very much focused on trying to understand how Novartis was spending their money rather than um, focusing on our pro focusing our programs on the players that are involved in outside council um, dealings. And that's exactly what, when we kicked off the third iteration of our outside council program at our 10th year anniversary in 2018, this is what we had in mind. Our goal was to develop an outside council program that would do three things to not focus on spend, but to put in the center the two important player groups, our in-house council, and help them to find the perfect match with the pool of outside council that we provide to them. Um, and secondly, to focus more on understanding the relationship between in-house and outside council through um, you know, collecting data to better understand our own purchasing behavior and collecting data to better understand how and what types of activities are guided in the collaboration between in and outside council. Third, and we put that first, we also wanted to provide a contribution to help the legal industry become more diverse. And we've been um, very bold in suggesting to the firms that were interested in joining our panel that we could only consider them if they were working together with us to get towards equity um, in how they staff the Novartis maps. Um, you probably have seen this um, in, in the press. Our starting point was to ask outside council to provide us with at least 20% of the partner time to be diverse and 30% of the associate time to be diverse. Um, that's the starting point as we, um, as we kicked off on the program. Um, I'll now hand over to Joachim, and I can tell you where we landed as, as part of the discussion that we had. Great. So, um, Akim, should I now perhaps provide a bit of an introduction to Pursuit, uh, a general, and then we can come back and perhaps answer some, some questions from Maris? I think that makes sense. Perfect. Okay, well, this is going to be, again, pretty brief, just to give you a general introduction to what Pursuit is, a little bit of a demonstration of, of how we help our clients like, like Maris and the ways in which we achieve and help them achieve their goals. So give me two seconds while I share my screen. So <clears throat> this, this is Pursuit. What you can see here is um, all of the different um, requests, and these are requests are sent typically by the managing attorney, inviting their law firms to uh, propose their services. Obviously, this can be split out by practice area and geography and so on, according to the requirements of the firm. And this is where you can actually use it to create a request. So in here, as you will see, after working with many of the Fortune 100 and large um, organizations um, like Novartis, we provide a library of templates that our clients can use when they're actually inviting the law firm to propose their services. This is a rigorous process and what it aims to do is enable better collaboration between um, the managing attorneys and outside counsel. So you're asking the right questions each and every time, making this a very, very simple process and a way in which you can feel confident that you are selecting the right um, representatives when you're looking at a particular uh, piece of work. 
I'm just going to show you a quick example here. So if we look at a, uh, for example, a um, employment litigation, this is an example of the kind of templates that we use. You can see in here when the managing attorney comes in, it's a very simple process for them just to type in the names of the lawyers that they'd like to invite to propose their services. Down here, the areas in yellow are the areas typically that they would um, update. And this enables the lawyer to bring a rigorous process around confirming the assumptions. Um, it enables the um, lawyer to split out that work. In this case, it's a um, employment litigation into the separate phases and allows the lawyer to really update the assumptions. So straight away, the law firms are better informed about what they're proposing their services for. And that ensures collaboration. It ensures um, that the law firms better understand their clients and that the clients actually set the right expectations when they're asking law firms to propose their services. The way in which they respond is, is very structured. So in here, you can see we would ask both the uh, 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 quantitative aspects. So that is pricing. And for example, within a, a litigation, you'd have all of the different phases and tasks associated with that, as well as the more qualitative aspects. So in here, you can see um, understanding what's excluded from the scope, um, understanding the expertise of the um, external counsel, their um, experience, arguing in front of certain judges and um, areas such as um, diversity and inclusion and if they are um, members of organizations like NAMWOLF or uh, Mansfield certified. So that's the process. It's very simple to actually send out um, the requests. What they look like when they come back in um, is, let me just open up this, um, they look like this. So this is an RFP for a commercial matter. You can see in here, this is actually a collaborative platform. It enables the um, managing attorney to see side by side the proposals from the law firms, and it enables the um, law firms to actually raise questions. So we have a, a, a messaging platform here. As those questions are answered, and, and typically there will be um, many questions, certainly involved with some of the larger matters, the managing attorney can simply go on and add a clarification. This means that rather than backwards and forwards and working in multiple Excel spreadsheets and um, you know the complexity involved in working across emails, telephone calls and uh, spreadsheets and so on, it just centralizes everything into a single place. When it actually comes to those proposals and the views that um, we empower both the uh, managing attorneys and also when they're working collaboratively with um, procurement, it enables you to, go, to actually have a side-by-side -side view of each of the different phases, the pricing, and enables um, both parties to move to more alternate fee arrangements. So they can, they can actually scale out those alternate fee arrangements that ultimately helps both the uh, client to focus and the law firm to focus on the outcomes. It isn't just the pricing, it also provides really uh, good insight. And we are consistently impressed by the way in which law firms provide value to their clients by actually detailing out their experience. And this is a, a key challenge with um, law becoming more complex and lawyers becoming more specialized, it's very difficult to get the right kind of legal advice um, in terms of getting the right specialists involved. Whereas this gives you insight before you actually um, instruct that lawyer to act on your behalf, you can see the strategies for success, experience with the judge in a side-by-side -side manner. I'm going to pause there um, and I see no questions have come up and maybe hand over to um, Akim to continue the discussion with Maris. Yeah, thank you, Mark. So um, I have received prior to this webinar a couple of questions from from colleagues uh, within here in, in, in the German market, um, and um, some of them are directed to Maurus, some to, to, to Mark. I would start with a question for Maurus. Um, you, we've read in the UV interview uh, where you talked about the general OCM program, but uh, also how you use uh, pursue it as a, as, a, as a tool to manage your outside counsel. Uh, what I'm interested in, as well as others, are how you set up your internal legal operations team with a particular focus on outside counsel management. So do you have dedicated resources for outside counsel management? How do you collaborate with, with Novartis procurement department? Um, and uh, yeah, the setup. Thank you, Arfim. I think that's a great question to start off with. Um, our, 
our setup is very lean. Um, we have me who probably spends 30% of my time on the program management, the relationship management with our law firms, but also with the Novartis attorneys who engage outside counsel. We have 20% of a person who provides the data analytics to support further development of the program and who supports uh, the relationship management that um, we, we take very seriously. Finally, we have procurement professionals that are part within the legal operations team and partly within the procurement organization who help the legal professionals that need outside counsel support to work through um, the pursuit process. Um, could the pursuit process being done by the attorneys themselves? It absolutely could, but it is their experience in how to use the predefined template, um, then doing this on a daily basis, which we think makes a big difference in order to start uh, an instruction of an outside counsel or a group of outside counsel um, just a little bit better compared to just one person doing it. And that's all um, there is. Um, there is a little bit of work, um, we could call this public relations that we do, you know, sessions like these um, or communication from our chief legal officer to the legal community about our diversity efforts. But all in all, um, it doesn't take um, that much time. Pursuit here plays a very important role to enable us focus on what's really relevant. Before we had the matching platform in place, the vast majority of my time was spent in fee negotiations, in conflict management, and in just administrating um, the, the, you know, the kind of the boring aspects of the program. Um, having, and we refer, with and of artists, we refer to this dating platform that establishes the matches between the Novartis lawyers and our outside council partners. Since we have that platform, um, a lot of the uh, work to determine price, a lot of the conflict is getting resolved automatically through the procurement process. Hence, all of the administrative burden is, is falling away. The month is of January and February. I used to spend negotiating the fees for the upcoming year. Um, we no longer do that because we determine price on a matter by matter basis um, and therefore are distributing this task to many people and we're achieving the best price or the appropriate price for a specific matter rather than giving a specific person a specific price tag, which we thought wasn't the right thing to do. Um, so to preempt the question, we do have many outside counsel um, that work for multiple Novartis matters at different rates because the type of activities that they do, the type of affordability for a specific matter um, is different which is why we believe uh, this new flexible setup um, is more appropriate 
um, in order to have a real program that is supporting the calls in place rather than you know just putting a panel like a panel system in place okay thank you Maris. we have two questions coming in i would start in that order uh, first question from Miranda. Hi, Miranda. Uh, is there a minimum amount of spend before using a tool like Pursue it will make sense, probably to Mark? Yeah, so um, with each of our clients, we sit down with them to understand the rules within um, which they will use the platform. So a number of our clients would want to um, use services like eDiscovery and fix that category of work. So they'll treat that as um, one particular aspect and then look at the rules around the expected fees. So if it is above you know, 5,000, they would say, yes, they would use Pursuit, but they would only have to invite maybe one firm or two firms. If it goes above 250,000, then they must invite three. If it goes above half a million, they must invite three and they must um, run a competitive um, process, which is an auction. And by the way, what an auction is, is the ability for the firms to compete in real time to update their pricing. Um, legal services, like anything, are beholden to the laws of supply and demand. So um, this gives the law firms an opportunity that they actually want to um, update their pricing and compete for the work. So that's, that's typically how it works across the board. What perhaps, Maris, do, do you want to share some of your experiences around how you um, manage the kind of rules around um, when to use Pursuit? I think, you know, what you said is exactly how we, we apply it. It depends on the type of activity first and foremost. Of course, our lawyers keep asking me for, for dollar amount thresholds. And we, we just said it's 10,000, which is a number that is more or less making everything we do with outside counsel in scope of pursuit. Um, the point though is, um, that you just need to apply common sense. If, if, if a case is a follow-on to something that we have done before, it probably doesn't make sense that we reach out to another two or three vendors in addition to the firm who has done the first piece of work. Um, if it is a counseling kind of answering a couple of questions, which might end up being over the $10,000 threshold, we also need to be realistic that, you know, if this is loose work, um, this process is probably not optimally suited. But as soon as it is a, a project with a defined beginning and a defined end, um, it actually has proven to be helpful no matter whether we are spending ten thousand or hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, because what this process helps us do as an instructing party, it forces us to think through the process and be very clear on what it is that we need outside counsel to collaborate together with us, and this is this is priceless. Um, um, in order to do, um, and it is worth even if, you know, the, the process that follows isn't, you know, helping us to reduce cost. What it will help us to do is to get exactly what we wanted it to be. Okay, thank you, Marius. We have a second question coming from Dave Cook. Hi, Dave. And Dave asks, when considering responses from law firms, obviously pricing is a key factor. And there are two questions associated to that. So first part is, how are other elements of proposals weighted or prioritized? To whomever, probably Mark in general or Maurice, how you apply it. I, I can respond from a perspective of how the technology works. And what, what it provides is an objective framework that you can use to actually evaluate the proposals. So by that, I mean, you can, and this is by matter type, you can 
define um, a 30% on experience, 20% on pricing. And you can actually go through and formalize a way in which not just one person, but a, a, a team of people can actually evaluate the proposals. So it brings a rigor and democratic process around how you are selecting a council. And obviously um, those can be used to, um, in addition, you know, they can be on a per matter beta basis, but in addition, you can use priorities that are across the board. And this isn't just in the scoping, you can use them in a very um, quantitative manner. So um, perhaps, Maris, you can discuss, you know, from the example of a diversity and inclusion, how you um, set certain thresholds. And that is not just within one matter type, that's, that's across the board. And look, when you receive when you receive three answers from, from, the, from the three different law firms, what they provide you with is, is, is an early case assessment light. Um, oftentimes these answers are provoking, are, are thought provoking and require us to, to go back to the law firms because elements um, have been weighted differently. So this is where we get the first benefit out of it. Um, we might eventually go back and clarify certain things and ask the law firms to bid again or, or to come back again on a specific aspect. So it's not like, you know, it's, it's one chance to, to, to get it right. Uh, what this technology does is it really helps us to compare um, smart answers and learn from those so that we can build on it. Um, as Mark suggested, we, we have um, a section where we look at the team, where we look at the, the experience, the diversity of the proposed team members, and it is oftentimes a discussion between multiple people at the Vardis who, who will look at, at all these aspects in order to select um, the, the appropriate partner for that specific initiative. Okay, thank you. And I, I do hope Dave answers the second part of, of your question. So as far as I've understood, you can, can prioritize or weigh matter by matter or, or lock it into the system and apply to, to different kinds of similar matters, for example. Um, I, I have another question, and, and I hear that point quite often here in the German-speaking market, which is some are reluctant to implement these kind of tools for one key reason, and that is that, that very often general counsel fear that, that either they themselves or the legal department loses their their say, personal relationship to their long-time external counsel, they get somewhat distracted. Um, can, can you explain in a bit more detail, Maris, how, how you deal with that? So has it been the case with the Novartis and what was your plan to, to get them involved rather than being affected by this new tool? Yes, so it depends how you use technology. Um, as, I, as I said before, it is our experience that the technology actually increases the quality of the discussion that we have with outside counsel, and it focuses the discussion on content. That's, that's one thing um, important uh, to mention. On the other hand, it uh, is true that the, the way we use our outside counter program is we would like to broaden the minds of our in-house counsel to see who is out there instead of always going to the same person um, and probably oftentimes receiving the same or similar advice. And um, this is the most cited benefit of our new program from our in-house attorneys that they were amazed with the amount of talent and great people that they have met 
um, through the introduction of, of this program. Um, and there is a flip side to it, I think that's absolutely true. Um, since we are using more and different people, the people we've always used might get a little bit less of Novartis's business. Still, if institutional knowledge or a long-term relationship is important for the matter, this law firm or this specific individual at a law firm will use the competitive advantage during the bidding process. And if it is really as important as we believe, has better chance um, to getting or to winning a specific bid. What we've learned, and this is just the learning of the last 12 months, is that the, the long-standing relationship might not be as important as we believed. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I have two more questions, as I don't see any other questions in the chat. Uh, one question probably to both of you. Um, could you explain, Mark and Morris, how you deal with the onboarding process so in case a client intends to use an electronic procurement tool as part of an OCM program. Uh, and probably Novartis has dozens, if not hundreds, of law firms on a, on a, in, in various jurisdictions. So how do you deal with onboarding law firms um, in case they haven't been pursued users due to other clients? So maybe I can uh, answer that first. So f first of all, within um, pursuit, when you invite the law firms in, it keeps you um, informed all the way throughout the process that um, the law firms have looked at the um, invite and they receive it via email. You can see um, they've cleared conflicts and you can see um, each step. So straight away, as soon as you use it, um, you are onboarding the law firms. As I said, we already have... Um, a large number of law firms <clears throat> throughout the world already using this platform but obviously um, you know there are consistently new people coming on board it doesn't just have to be the global law firms we have you know sole practitioners um, responding to requests through the platform for specialist um, legal advice all the um, law firms need to respond is, is simply an internet connection so they can access the cloud-based platform and an email address so it's incredibly simple um, we do triage the service as well so making sure that they received it if there are any kind of issues that they respond and we're very um, conscious around the law firms um, use of this technology so that we are consistently providing um, webinars we're consistently um, supporting them and providing advice on the platform and to be clear that the, the feedback that we get and this really talks to the, the previous uh, question around the relationship is incredibly positive um, from law firms <clears throat> they um, you know uh, generally feel that they understand the clients better it isn't a question just of price by bringing that rigor to the scoping process we've actually seen prices increase because they understand exactly what um, is being supplied and that's good for both the client and um, the law firm because the worst situation in the world is that the law firm has to write off a, a load of work that they did because they didn't understand the scope or that the client receives a bill that really didn't um, uh, reflect their expectation um, in addition, I mean, when it, you look at that, um, the relationship and the way that this evolves over time, it, it gives the law firms the opportunity to actually uh, bid for work. And um, a lot of uh, large um, corporates are going through a process of panel arrangements, but those panel arrangements you know, can, can be... Uh... Are you still there? Sorry, did we lose Morris? We lost Morris. Yeah, oh, I right. <laughs> Okay, well, well, we'll wait for him to rejoin. But those panel arrangements um, can be detrimental to, to the relationship because obviously the law firms put a great deal of time and effort into um, actually um, responding to the panel. They don't feel that they're really getting the um, work that is associated with the panel. So with that in mind, this enables them to actually, you know, um, 
provide proposals and it illuminates the managing attorney the the lawyers are actually responsible for making the decision around outside counsel it illuminates the expert expertise of those law firms and we have seen that influence the behavior so they'll see that um, certain law firms and the, what i consistently hear from those attorneys in-house is i didn't realize that this um this law firm had that expertise and you know this is someone that i'll actually want to use so i see we have maris back sorry i thought that was me um being disconnected um but uh yeah perhaps maris can add a little bit on to that so maris you're currently on mute let me uh yes i um sorry sorry i had to dial in with my with my phone and i i missed part of what you said um but but having the question in mind um we you know, we collaborate with well over a thousand vendors. Um, we, we group them in three categories. There is the largest group, which is the IP agents that support our patent and trademark uh, processes. With those, we have fixed fees per transactions agreed. So pursuit onboarding wasn't uh, necessary. We might consider using pursuit for specific um, price negotiations on transactions in the future, but, but for now, these negotiations were done um, some time ago and, and without um, the benefit of tools. Um, the second category is the law firms that are locally engaged um, and those we currently don't have in scope for pursuit um, for, for the pursuit process, but on both ends, law firms and in-house counsels from you know, the smaller to mid-sized countries volunteer and opt into using Pursuit because they hear from their colleagues that engage um, our global and headquarter firms that this process is good and makes sense. Lastly, um, the, the third group of firms is, is our global preferred firm panel. Um, which is where we focus our efforts on. These are 22 firms that we've selected out of a lineup of nearly um, 70 firms. And those were onboarded to the idea of the program and of pursuit prior to them joining the panel. So those 22 firms um, have more or less been onboarded before we started working together. And we've done a lot of training and information exchange where we took outside counsel and in-house counsel together um, because we thought it was important for them um, you know, to hear um, the full picture of how they could leverage the tool to better um, collaborate. In terms of spending, this last group makes just above 80% of everything that we spent. Um, and that probably helps to understand why we, we focus on those 22 vendors with so much more effort than everybody else. 8020, it's the the uh, Pareto to Swiss, by the way, rule. So perfectly makes sense. Um, there are no further questions from, from participants. I have one final question and probably that's the let's say let's say closing questions to Maurus. Maurus, what would be your let's say top three recommendations to colleagues within legal departments? We have outside council management on top of their agenda, including the potential use of an electronic tool in terms of what they should do the way forward. So top three recommendations. 
Um, you know, learning, learning from some of the mistakes that we have done, um, don't focus on money, focus on people. Design a program that helps your legal professionals in your company um, to get at the top of their game and to help them find the best partner with outside counsels in an efficient and effective manner. Um, keep the program simple. Um, don't, you know, try not to build up a machine around the administration of the program, but try to keep the management of outside counsel in the responsibility of your in-house counsel. Um, this will help um, that you can convince your in-house counsel, who I believe are more difficult to convince of this change than outside counsel, that it is worth um, spending a little bit more time upfront in defining what the collaboration with outside counsel needs to look like and what you're expecting from them. Um, and you'd rather want them to spend the time there than um, you know, solving the conflict at the back end that, at least with Navarre, is oftentimes raised because you know, we, 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 we didn't meet um, the budget expectations that, that were raised and probably were never really properly documented at the beginning of, of the case. Um, and that's, that, that's probably the, the, the most relevant points um, I, I, I'd like to share. Um, I, I do think that um, the design of the program, and that's maybe a third element, the design of the program needs to be fully endorsed by, by your general counsel or chief legal officer. I, I don't think we could have driven this program so successfully if it weren't fully endorsed uh, by the legal leadership of, of our company. Okay, thank you, Marius. Um, I'm done with my list. Mark, anything you would like to add? Um, just my thanks to you both for uh, participating in, in this. Uh, I've certainly found a lot. I always learn a lot <clears throat> when listening to Marius. So um, that was very kind of you to, to both participate. And I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today. So I would also like to thank everybody, I'd like to thank you, Mark and Maurus, for uh, taking the time to share some insights here with uh, the participants. Uh, Mark, I don't know whether this will be available as a recording and... Yeah, I'll, I'll share recording details. Okay, perfect. Okay, then, thanks everyone and um, have a nice day and we'll close this recording now. Thank you and bye-bye. Thanks. Thank bye -bye. you all, bye.